Hello, my friends. Because Sabina, the storm is so bad today, I want to write an app for that. Uh, I heard about floodings, power supply uh, shortages in the UK, and also in Germany, we have a lot of problems. So that is reason enough for me to create a small little app that uh, gets the information from the Open Weather API. And let's go into it. I will make it as a quick video. So that means everything is shorted. I will not explain anything. And it's just how I code it in a very quick way. So let's go. Inside of the home screen, we have here already prepared the boilerplate where we import the home screen here. And inside of the home screen, we want to access the API. For that, I will create a secondary class that we call class um, weather API. And inside of that class, we call uh, create a function called fetch and data. Inside of fetch data, we will receive the call. We have the API URL, which is this one. And we have to provide here some information, like for example, the city name. And the city name is just a basic string, right? And also the API URL is just a basic string. And if we look into the um, URL here, we want to add in the query name, the city name. And inside of the app ID, whoop, we need our API key that I find currently inside of the API. So I have to get the API key and the API key comes from the secret file. So let's see if I can import that. Yep, I can, perfect. And the city name should be up here. So it's a bit weird that it doesn't take the name. What is wrong here? Only static can be accessed in the initializer. Okay, all right, so we put that in the fetch. And inside of the fetch, we want to call that URL. And for that, we need the HTTP package. The HTTP package is currently not inserted, so we have to go to the pubspec.yaml. And in the pubspec.yaml, we have to add the HTTP client with any. We get the packages and go back to our home screen in the meantime. So we make a get call to the API URL. And with that, we get the information from the, uh, ah, yeah, because we don't have the HTTP packet, we have only there. And now I have to say here as HTTP. And now I have to say HTTP.get. With that, we get all the information from the HTTP, but we have to wait for it because it's an async question here. So we get all the data here. So var data equals that. Cool. So in data, we have now our um, feedback stream. So if I could look into it, we have here JSON. If I go to the call, so if I look into the um, JSON that we received back, we will see here the wind power is speed for one and degree 80. So we want to have are mainly interested in this wind, wind <coughs> in this wind part here. So what we can do is now we um, select the wind and the speed. So we want to display that. So back into our code, we go here and have now the data wind and there is also the speed. And this is our info and that is not quite correct because we have to JSON decode the data dot body. Oops. We have to get the data dot body. And from that, we can receive the data from wind and the speed. Voila, easy enough. And of course, that one returns the info. And this happens from fetch data. Now we need, of course, a future builder that receives always the future, uh, receives the data as soon as the future is called. So we get a context, we get a snapshot, and with that snapshot, we want to return the correct values. So what we want to is the text widget, which says us the speed, wind speed is today. And this is, of course, inside of a column. And here we get the value inside of snapshot.data. And there is the value of the wind speed. And of course, what we have also to do is instead of just returning this, we have to check the snapshot part has data. And then the columns coming, else there would be like a circular progress indicator. Go for it. Return column or so 
So voila, if we start the application now. So if we start the application now, we see a circular spinner because we always fall into faults. Also, I, what I can see is we don't have currently a scaffold. So we should create a scaffold. Inside of that scaffold, we have a body and that is our future builder. Now everything looks a bit more beautiful. If we wrap that one in the center, we get that in the center, which is also pretty neat. <clears throat> so back to our weather API. Here we didn't have received a weather name, uh, a, car, a city name. So I take my hometown right now and restart the application. What happens now after some seconds, hopefully? So after starting the app, you can see there is still the circular spinner. Nothing works because the future builder needs to provide a future. And of course, that future is in weather API that we have to execute with the um, fetch data. So the problem here is that this future will always execute whenever we build the whole app, but that's fine. So we start restart. Okay, still we don't get any data. So we have to update here a try catch course. So we do that and we make a catch with the E and we check what is inside of E. Voila, all right, we are invalid arguments, cool. So we have to remove all of that. And the invalid argument is in that case, of course, the HTTPS that is missing. So if I call that, we throw, because that double is not a string. So we have to call to string here. And with that, we got all our information. Cool, man. So now we have to update, of course, that to bring it into the center because it looks not nice there. And we have to update the size of the whole uh, text style size and give it a, something big. And we have, of course, to say the main axis alignment is in center. So with that, you know exactly the wind speed in your town right now. So if we enter here, for example, London, we will get 11.3. And if we enter, for example, Prague, we get 8.2. Cool, so you can use that for your next application. And if you like, you can check out that one in GitHub. So thank you for watching. Even if it was a short episode, see you the next time. Bye.